hello everyone and welcome to MedTube, our channel for medical education. And today will be the day that I record my first video of a series that will hopefully be as beneficial, knowledgeable, and exciting as possible for everyone. But before we get started, I want to say that I'm not mentioning all the criteria for the different ECG abnormalities that we will be seeing, but I'm choosing the quickest and easiest criteria to understand and retain in order to apply them more quickly and efficiently during your rounds or in the ER. Alright, so how to read an ECG? Let's get started. This is the outline. We will be talking about the rhythm, the rate, the axis, the different waves and intervals of an ECG complex. Then to conclude, we will be talking about bundle branch block, left ventricular hypertrophy, and the right ventricular hypertrophy on an ECG. But before we start with the uh, with the uh, the outline, first let's revise the ECG physiology quickly. We got the P wave, the QRS, and the T. The P wave represents atrial depolarization. The QRS complex is ventricular depolarization, and the T wave here is ventricular. The repolarization. Atrial repolarization is submerged within the QRS complex so you cannot really see it on an ECG. The U wave here is sometimes seen in a normal ECG and it's believed to represent uh, papillary muscle repolarization but it could be an also an indicator of hypokalemia. So let's start with the rhythm of the heart. Now how to read an ECG? First thing you always look at the rhythm. A normal heart rhythm is called normal sinus rhythm. And you get the P, Q, R, S, T. And the interval between the R and the R is constant. It's not changeable. It should be constant between each R and R. This is called normal sinus rhythm. If it's not equal, this is called irregular rhythm. And you get two types. One is regularly irregular, which is commonly seen in second degree AV block, type 2. Um, so you get it looks it's actually abnormal but it's abnormal in a regular pattern so you get a pattern here this is called secondary AV block um, the other one is irregularly irregular and this is seen typically in atrial fibrillation completely chaotic and no organization at all like in this ECG you got no discernible uh, you no know, identifiable P waves but and it's because the atria are fibrillating and next thing we look for on an ECG is the rate. And the easiest way to calculate the rate is to look at the R wave here. To get an R wave on a thick line like here. And if the next R wave is in the next thick line here, one big box away right here, then your heart rate is 300. If it's on the second big thick line, the heart rate is 150. If it's on the third one, it's 100. The fourth is 75, 60, and then 50. So 300, 150, 175, 60, 50. This is the easiest way to estimate heart rate and the quickest way possible. Why you can? Why is it important to check first the rhythm? Because you cannot really use this if the if the rhythm is irregular. If it's irregular, you gotta go old-fashioned and read the count all the the beats for at least 10 seconds or 15 seconds and multiply it by um, by six or four respectively to get the uh, the rate in a minute now we're done with the rhythm and the rates now let's check the axis of the heart the normal cardiac axis what it means is the average direction of spread of depolarizations through the ventricles so normal cardiac axis is to have both lead one and AVF upwards. So you can see here, lead one is upwards and AVF is upwards. This is called normal cardiac axis. Lift axis deviation means lead one is positive right here, AVF is negative. Lead one is positive and AVF is negative. And this means that the left ventricle is working more than the right ventricle. And you've got lots of causes. Right axis deviation means that the AVF is positive and lead 1 is negative. And this means that right ventricle is working more than the left ventricle. Right axis deviation. So you can see here actually lead 1, you get 1 is upward, 1 is downwards. But you look at the, the longest, the longer one. The longer one is going downwards. So this is called negative deflection of QRS. So lead 1 is negative. AVF is positive. This is right axis deviation. 
great. Now we're done with the rhythm, the rate, and the axis. With practice, you gotta do all of these in 10 to 15 seconds max. And it's gonna be an easy work with practice, of course. Now we go to the uh, the ECG complex. We'll be talking about the following stuff. So first thing is the P wave. The P wave, it's very simple thing. The, the important thing first to look for is presence. Is it present or not? And it's absent in some arrhythmias. So first thing is for the presence. If it's present, is it of normal morphology or not? This is the normal morphology in lead 2. Usually we look at lead 2. Lead 4 is more complicated. You don't, you don't need to look at it. Look at lead 2. This is the normal P wave. If the P wave is peaked, like in this in this pattern here, this is called right atrial enlargement or P pulmonale. If it's enlarged in this way, you can see it's looking like M shaped. This is called P mitrally. Mitrally M for the M shaped uh, of the P wave, and this means left atrial enlargement. So basically, you look at the P wave for right atrial enlargement and left atrial enlargement. This is an example for right enlargement. So again, which lead do we look at? It's lead two right here. You can see the P wave is very large, right here. This is left atrial enlargement. Again, look at lead two. See the P wave right here? It got like looks like an M. Also here looks like an M. So this is left atrial enlargement. The next thing after the P wave is the PQ seg PQ interval. Sorry. Now people commonly call it PR interval, but actually I prefer that the we call it. Uh, I go with the calling of PQ interval because actually from P to the Q wave, and to be honest, it's not even cl it's not even the Q wave. See, the PQ interval is the beginning of the Q wave. You don't you do not go to the top to the tip of the Q wave. You go to the beginning of the Q wave. So from the beginning of the P wave till the beginning of the Q wave right here. This is called BQ interval. And normally it's 0 0.12 seconds to 0 0.2 seconds. That's three small squares to five small squares. PQ interval, it's prolonged typically on hard blocks. So you can see here, this is the P wave and this is the Q. So from here from the beginning till the Q, this is definitely more than one large square. So this, this is almost one and a half large squares. So this is prolonged PQ interval. It is shortened in some conditions, such as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. This is the typical example. So you can hear the P wave, and right after the P wave, you get the Q, right here. So you barely have any distance between them. So this is shortened P wave. P sorry, shortened PQ interval, less than three small squares. It is depressed in pericarditis. You get also other examples, but typically the typical example is pericarditis because it's very specific. If you have depressed PQ interval for uh, I believe this is the most typical example for pericarditis so you can see here the PQ interval is is depressed the next the third thing on a, of a ECG complex so you, you finish with the P wave then the PQ interval now the Q wave the Q wave normally you you've got many criteria I bl I I prefer this one if it's more than three uh, more than sorry, more than two small squares deep. So here, like in this one, look, you, you have almost five small squares deep. This is abnormal Q wave. It is most indicator of an old MI. So if you get an old MI, like here, you have the leads two, three, and AVF. Those are the inferior leads. So this means you have an old MI and the inferior leads, deep Q waves. You have also T inversion to suggest also an old MI. So more than two small squares deep. The fourth thing we look at is the QRS complex. Normally, it is less than three small squares in 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 uh, in uh, width. So it is prolonged in ventricular arrhythmias and bundle branch blocks. This example here, do you know what this is? This is ventricular tachycardia. Since it is ventricular in origin, the QRS are wide. You can here see there are definitely more than three small squares. This is ventricular tachycardia. The fifth thing we check is the QT interval. Normally, the QT interval is less than half half of the RR interval. So, so this is this is QT from Q to the end of the T wave. 
you go from the Q wave till the end of the T wave and normally it should be less than half of the distance between the R and the R there's another criteria less than 0.45 uh, seconds but I prefer this one this one is easier to, to follow uh, so this is a long QT you can see here it's longer than half of the RR distance so this is prolonged QT QT is particularly important to pick up because it can predispose to ventricular tachycardia or torsa depoint both of which can lead to uh, sudden death The, the sixth thing you check is the ST segment. It's not interval, it is called segment. And normally it is isoelectric and it, it starts from the J point. The J point is right here. The, the meeting, the, the end of the S wave and the beginning of the ST segment. This is called J point. So you start looking at the ST segment from the J point. And it should be isoelectric. Where is the ACG's baseline? So you can compare it. It is the TP segment. So you have you have here the T and the, so this is the T, this is the, the T wave. So you get here the T P segment. This is the P wave. So this is right here. This is the ACG's baseline. So you can see here the ST segment is the, at the level of the T P segment. So this is normal ST segment. It is elevated in ST elevation by carl infarction and pericarditis. You can see here the ST segment elevation, and this is the T wave. And this is the TP segment. So this is the ACG's baseline right here. This is a TP segment. This is the ST elevation. It is depressed in non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, ischemia, such as stable angina and unstable angina, and in the joxin toxicity. See here the uh, ST segment depression, and we have a T wave inversion. This is this is probably ischemia, ischemic change because you got a T wave inversion as well. And the last thing is the T wave. We look at the, Q, the ECG complex. Normal Q wave is inverted and leads AVR and V1. So AVR and V1 normally to be inverted. Sometimes also leads 3, V2 and V3. T wave inversion is commonly seen in ischemia, ventricular hypertrophy and other causes. So the, the most important thing is to detect the inversion. If you got inversion, uh, right, so you got inversion right here. You can see it. We have the hyperacuity wave, which is the er sometimes the earliest sign of a ST elevation myocardial infarction. Right here, you can see here hyperacuities, and this is very important to pick up because this is this indicates myocardial infarction. We've got a peak T wave, which is seen in hyperkalemia. Right here, you see a peak T wave. And to detail this apart from the hyperacuity wave right here, and seen in ST elevation, is that the hyperacuity waves have a white base. You can see here there's a white base in here. Whereas for the uh, for the peak T wave in hyperkalemia, you have a narrow base right here. And the last abnormal T wave is called the flat T wave, which is seen mostly in a hypokalemia, right here. And you can see also a U wave indicating also hypokalemia. So you get a flat T wave and a U wave. So great, now we're done with almost uh, 70 to 80% of reading an ECG. And to conclude, to be more, if you want to be, you don't want to miss anything, you, uh, you, have, you can also check for the bundle branch block, the, left, the bundle branch block and the hypertrophies. Now the bundle branch block, it means a block in either the right bundle branch or the left bundle branch. The left bundle branch constitutes of three branches: the the posterior fascicle, the fascic, uh, fascicle, the the anterior fascicle, and the septal fascicle. So, right bundle branch block means the right bundle is blocked, of course, and it is most the most characteristic thing is the RSR pattern in V1 and or V2. So you go to V2 here, for example. You have the R S R pattern. See? Also in V1, you have R S R pattern. R S R. So you get two R waves actually. And also you have deep S wave in in V6, but you don't really need to, to look at that. The most important thing is the R S R pattern in V1 or V2. Right under branch block. This is left under branch block. Exactly the same. You have the R S R pattern. 
but actually the two R waves are more clo are closer to each other, so they call it the M pattern in in, in V6. V5 or V6. So you can hear, see here, V5, V6, both have this M pattern. So this is left bundle branch block. And the last thing is to check for the hypertrophies on your ECG. And we have the right ventricular hypertrophy. The easiest criteria is to look at V1. Is the R wave longer than the S wave or not? If the R wave is longer than the S wave and V1, this is right ventricular hypertrophy. This is the easiest criteria you can look at. You have also other criteria to look at the RS ratio in V5 or V6, as in here. Um, you can look at the uh, the uh, the R wave, but the easiest one, just look at V1. Is the R longer than S? This is right ventricular hypertrophy. You can you can also you, this is normal ECG again. See the R wave is shorter than the S wave in V1. By the right ventricular hypertrophy, see the R wave is longer than the S wave. So this is right ventricular hypertrophy. Left ventricular hypertrophy, you have an R wave in V5 or V6 plus S wave in V1 to be more than 35 small squares. So you have the, the, uh, the R wave here, the S wave here. Combine them together more than 35 small squares. This is left ventricular hypertrophy. Usually you can also see the inverted T waves in leads 1, as here, AVL, V5, and V6, all of which go with left ventricular hypertrophy and left axis deviation, but it's not specific for left ventricular hypertrophy. So great, now you're done, with, now we're done with all the, the steps to read an ECG. The, the best thing to do right now is practice. So if you, I would recommend also to listen to this video again and again more than once so you can uh, keep recollecting all the steps and whenever you see an ECG go through all the steps to make sure you do not miss any of the, the steps before and uh, thank you very much for watching guys and I hopefully hopefully you got uh, the benefit from watching this video and God bless you all take care